Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the full patch 6.4 patch. So it's main thing we're going to be looking at is the job adjustments that they keep out of the preliminaries every time. They might as well just put it in there. What does it matter? We gotta find out in three days anyway. But I understand, so we need a separate video for that altogether. Now there should be PvE and PvP job changes. I haven't PvP'd that much in in a while i did a little bit of, of clockwork castle town but not not that much so i'm probably gonna mostly stick to the pve stuff i also asked my chat since i'm live on twitch for this recording if there was anything else i really needed to look at apparently there were some nameplate changes so i might go look at those as well but i think we should go right to the thing that everyone wants and that is their pve job changes because is this going to change the way anyone what jobs people want to take in a savage in a week only time will tell. So here we are in the battle system. Also, I always forget to do this since they started doing it. I, I should open up the job guide after this is done and read the reasons. I'm going to guess the reasons still, but I should read the reasons. Not that I think they're that hard to figure out anyway. Okay, so we know all three tanks are getting adjustments other than Dark Knight. Paladin probably in need of the majority of buffs. <clears throat> and we can already see some pretty significant potency changes so riot blade getting an extra 20 potency uh given that you riot blade what four times a minute i want to say that's going to add up pretty nicely circle of scorn getting 20 potency on the base hit is also quite nice divine veil being the recipient of the 30 yalm range buff love to see it royal authority going up by 20 now that I mean, that you use more than six times a minute i'm pretty oh no 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 that that you'll use the same amount of times for some reason i was thinking atonement which also, by the way, got 20 potency anyway. So yeah, every piece of their combo got 20 potency except the opening hit. And as such, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. When five of your six GCDs in your literal one, two, three, four, four, four gets a 20 potency buff, an extra 100 potency per beginning to end combo, um, that adds up a lot across an entire fight. Now, I don't know the exact percentages on that. But that's definitely a, a fairly significant buff that requires absolutely no effort of, and retooling of what you're doing right now. Um, and with all of those in particular getting 20, a big thing is with Paladin, um, you have a difference between going for a very set two minute window where you try to make sure that all of your two minutes have like very specific lineup. And then there's also what's called the freestyle Paladin uh, one minute, two minute stuff, where essentially as soon as you can go into your one minute, regardless of whether it's on an odd or an even minute, then you just go and then whatever GCDs you have available at the time uh, are the ones that you go for. Now, obviously, when you have higher potency skills that can potentially direct or crit during that window, you look to try to land royal authorities or atonements in that time. But either way, giving 20 potency to pretty much everything except the starting combo is going to, at the very least, somewhat go along with that. But again, with damage variance and how wild it's been, the higher these potencies get, the less you want to do that. So that may impact... Uh, people's willingness to do the freestyle bit a little bit, but probably not that much. It's probably still going to be largely about a comfort thing. Uh, we have Warrior uh, only getting 10 potency. That's how you know the pal. Well, I say that, but I got to read through everything because I saw I saw Felcleave and I see that down below. So maybe I should shut my mouth until I read it. Storm's Path and Storm's Eye both getting 10 potency. Um, vengeance, the vulnerability down status effect has been combined with the vengeance status effect. Yeah, so essentially just the thing that reflects the damage and the vulnerability down. Same debuff now, so it just it's not two different debuffs. I wonder if that's in response to the buff to the buff problem from top. They're like, let's start paring stuff down now. Uh, Felcleave getting thirty, you'll love to see it. Anytime Felcleave gets a buff, you'll love to see it. Upheaval, that's a that's a pretty nice buff as well. Only you know once every thirty seconds, but still. Shake it off, a beneficiary of the thirty on buff and inner chaos going up just by ten potency. So yeah, just a dude, these these are significant. But again, I think Paladin's consistency on the hundred potency per rotation will probably be a little more noticeable. Other than maybe the one minute window. The big thing is is that this stuff affects the actual buff window. I'd say a little bit more. Uh, I guess it depends on how again efficient you are with getting atonements into the Paladin buff window. But it should be way more consistently across the entire fight for the Paladin, whereas this is a lot more of, you know, the stuff that is not spammed, I suppose. Or it's not spammed outside of one or two minute windows. Uh, Dark Knight 
Missionary at least got the 30 ohm buff. That's good. I mean, we expected that. Gunbreaker, small buffs here. Uh, Keen Edge, that's actually a really nice one, getting 30 potency. Uh, Brutal Shell also getting 30. And Heart of Light being the beneficiary of the 30 ohms. Yeah, that's just a, a nice little, nice little tune-up, I suppose. Gunbreaker probably didn't need too much in the way of tuning up, but it's good to see that they just make sure it uh, it's, it's, doesn't fall behind with all the other buffs. Monk, just Mantra and Brotherhood, both beneficiaries of the 30 ohm range. Uh, jump, we already knew this change. It no longer actually changes the position of the Dragoon, which is going to lead to some hilarious stuff. So you can use it while bound, so cases like Rubicante will no longer be dumb and annoying. Um, you will also, theoretically, unless they screw it up somehow, uh, you will somehow be able to just like jump across a gap with just jump and high jump, because high jump down below has the same change. Uh, so if something's across a gap and you still want to hit it with jump, you should be able to since it's not actually changing your position anymore. Um, now, that does not stand for Star Diver and, and, and Dragon Fire and Spine Shatter. But for regular high jump, it should be the case. So you should see some pretty funny stuff. Litany, 30 Alms, Dragon Sight, nullifies direction requirements. Didn't see that one. I mean, they're getting rid of them for 7.0. Let's be real here. Like, it is the next thing to go. So... Might as well just accept that this is because they're doing that in 7.0. <laughs> like, it's going to happen. I've accepted it already. So, uh, Samurai, uh, no, no, <laughs> listen, I know what you're all thinking every time we get to the Samurai section. Uh, no, it's not here. It's not back. It's never coming back. It's gone forever. Maybe it'll come back as an emote one day, but it's not coming back. <laughs> Uh, Tenka Goken, uh, 8 Yalm Radius now. Imagine that got the 30 Yalm Radius treatment. My goodness. Uh, Sene, 60 potency. Oh my goodness, dude. Sene already feels so good to hit. Uh, Keishi Goken, also 8 Yalms. Shoha, 560. Oginami Kiri. Wow. Oginami. So a big thing for me, Oginami Kiri and Keishi Namikiri are some of the most consistent damage dealing tools in the game. Uh, we talk about damage variants a lot with the other with pretty much every DPS that isn't Samurai. Yes, you do have their other skills, like, you know, Sene, I believe, is their AoE one, if I remember correctly. Um, if I don't, then feel free to correct me. But all the same, Samurai is not a job that deals as much with damage variants because all of their hardest-hitting skills pretty much direct crit, except for one, you know. Uh, and so when you add 60 potency to things that are guaranteed direct crits, uh, it's very much a huge, huge buff to them just because it's already such a consistent job when it comes to the output so i'm always a big fan uh no okay sene is the single target yeah so sene when you do crit it feels nice that's the one skill i was referring to that doesn't always direct crit um but midare ogi namikiri and keishi namikiri whenever any of those get buffs it's always such a nice thing when it comes to samurai uh reaper just getting the arcane circle uh radius buff fizz range as a whole getting the peloton radius buff and here's the other role that I figured would probably get some changes. Although with Bard, I hadn't considered all of their songs being beneficiaries of the 30 ohm range. And that is essentially all Bard got. I actually fully expected Bard to see some potency buffs. But Ballad, Peon, and Minuet now beneficiaries of the 50 Yalm buffs. So it'll be nigh impossible for someone to be out of range of your songs. Battle Voice, Troubadour, Nature's Min, and Radiant Finale, all 30 Yalms as well. So yeah, Bard basically just a, you're not missing my song, dance, water, dance, please. Uh, although you never play with a dancer as a Bard, that'd be an awful comp. So yeah, uh, that's all they got. I really expected to see a potency change there. And it looks like it might be the same for all the rest. Yeah, no potency change. I really thought Fizz Range was going to see a potency change across the board um, and not just range increases, but that's what it is. You know, machinist with tactician, then dancer um, range of the step bonus. That was the thing I wanted to see. I was like, please <laughs> only for technical finish. Well, no, this makes sense. So the, the standard step bonus effect, which is not the damage radius. It's just the effect radius is enormous on standard step, but on technical it's not. So I did say that they need to make sure they only change the step bonus effect. And that's exactly what they did. So glad to see that. Black Mage, 80 potency to Xenoclossy, oh baby, and a 2% overall magic damage buff for Enochian. That's, there better be some Red Mage buffs below or they're going to be mad. <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> Summoner getting- Oh man, Red Mage is gonna be mad. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I think Black Mage kind of needed that. I really, once again, expected Red Mages to see a buff of some kind. Um, Summoner, I didn't think what I was gonna see. Searing Light, I expected, but I didn't expect it for Red Mage. And then White Mage, Asylum getting range buffed again! I remember when Asylum was at its smallest. <laughs> it's not a good time. Uh, effect Radius, 15 Yalms. Dia, even getting a potency increase on Dia of all. Okay. <laughs> Why not, I guess. And Temperance being 50 Yalms. Yo, Temperance being 50 Yalms is either going to be literally the most god tier thing, or when I scroll down to Scholar, I'm not going to care anymore. One of the two things is true. Uh, let's see. All these are 30 alms. Expedient, Constellation, Seraphic Limit. So Expedient being 30 is the big thing. Um, all the other effects matter, but Expedient not missing people is by and far the most important thing here. Temperance has always had the benefit of being not targeted mitt and being mitt that follows the white mage no matter where they put it. Expedient is a matter of the initial application. So both incredible buffs, the range buffs to those are super, super important. Honestly, the deployment buffs as well. Soil, like, it, the, all the these Yalm buffs are all so important, but uh, but definitely expedient. Soil, too. Soil is important because sometimes people want to be into a soil, and they also want to be, like, they need to be spread a little bit, but it's like a circular AoE. And sometimes everyone fitting in the soil with a circular spread is a little nerve-wracking. So those extra five Yalms add a lot of safety to things like that, and that's probably the main reason why you're seeing those more than anything else, especially for people who macro targets for Sacred Soil Asylums and drops it dead center in the hitbox on, like, somewhat reasonably sized bosses, which we'll see how many of our bosses have reasonably sized hitbox, but besides the point. Uh, Astro Div to 30, we knew that. Collective Unconscious, oh my goodness. Uh, that's a big, that's a big, <laughs> big range on Collective. <laughs> Additional effect reducing damage taken now has a duration of five seconds. I always felt like it had that. I've, I mean, I feel like we've had the quick applications, but maybe it hasn't been five. Maybe it's been something like three. Uh, but either way, Sage, yoms, 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 and Dosis. I heard some people whisper that Sage might see a potency increase, so I'll take, I, I guess I should have taken their word for it with the, uh, the, in, the initial potency of the Eucrasian Dose, because that's just the initial application of the dot. It's the same thing they did to Dia, although Dia also got a damage over time buff, but... Uh, yeah, this is just the initial application. But I, I heard people whisper that, but I think they might have expected more than that. Summon Selena's gone, and then this is all the stuff from the original patch notes. The things I would scroll down to next would be the PvP changes, which are probably not too much further down. Okay, maybe maybe they were further down than I expected. I did want to go back to the job guide, though. I, I didn't forget about that. I'm just going to search PvP. Here we go. Uh, yeah, see, like, this, let me, first, let me just see the scope of the changes here. Okay, they're not that much. New, new oh, my goodness, wait, they got a, oh, I didn't expect that. Oh, so they got guillotine, I gave them guillotine and PvP, oh, but they got rid of gibbet and gal, oh, okay, hold on, now I kind of want to read it, because Reaper got some pretty significant changes. <clears throat> Holy Sheltron, uh, potency of damage dealt to the barrier is not absorbed, and the effect duration has been changed from 2,000 plus 50% of the potency to 100% of the potency. Interesting. Uh, I guess that, well, I think that's that's technically an improvement. 50% to that. Yeah, I mean, given that the potency of the bear, I think, yeah, I gotta, I gotta look at the whole original skill, and I'm not, again, I haven't PvP'd much, so I'm not as, like, man, can they stop changing this, please? <laughs> Every time I look at monk changes, I swear the pressure point effect has had some sort of change, but it's only specifically from Enlightenment, so I guess I get it. Uh, Thunderclaps, Wind Resonance being longer. Okay, that's good. I like that. Dragoon. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this has been changed. The range, the minimum's gone up. That's gone up. That I feel like I see this. I mean, to be fair, there aren't very many PvP skills, but I feel like I see the changes just ping pong back and forth every single... Stop changing Sky Shadow. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they kept the max potency the same and just made the minimum potency exactly half of it, but still annoyed. Ninja, I hate ninjas in PvP so much. I hate them. Uh, only 20 seconds on Bunshin and Seitan Tenchu. Uh, time required to fill the limit gauge has been increased. 
I swear they decreased it before, but okay, we'll increase it again because Ninja, Ninja can be so annoying with that. Uh, Isatsu Chiten. Oh, great. I love the, the Kuzushi effect. Big fan of that effect for very many reasons. Uh, Reaper no longer having Gibbet and Gallows in PvP is so interesting. Just giving them Guillotine. I guess it's just so they only have one action. So it's like they don't have to track the Gibbet and the Gallows like they do in PvE. Um, so they just gave them Guillotine. And Guillotine is like your Soul, Soul Reaver ability use. Uh, but yeah, so recast time. Soul Slice going down to 15 seconds actually pretty nice. And Grim Swathe, maximum stacks of Soul Reaver, reduced from 2 to 1, yeah, because you won't have Gibbet or Gallo, so you just use the 1 on Gibbet. So it's, yeah, it seems more so to be just like a usability thing, but I wonder what the actual numerical difference ends up being. Bar All right, come on now. This was my favorite part about playing Bard in PvP. This is why I swapped to Bard in PvP over Monk, was that skill. And you... It's okay, so it's literally just an interrupt. It's, well, it's a silence still, but only a two second silence with no di man. Man, I mean, yeah, you gave me 2000 on repelling. Oh, yeah, repelling and apex, but man, I mean, they buffed this by five percent. It's a trade off, but I love silent nocturne. It's only 15 yams now, also. Man, I like that job. I like, I love that skill. Oh, man. Yeah, but at least the Warden's Pain effect is, uh, that's a pretty significant buff to that. Bioblaster, potency is now doubled. Oh man, Bioblaster needed buffs like a lifetime ago. And we haven't even had Crystalline Conflict that long, but it needed that, that buff a long, long time ago. Chainsaw, okay, what does it say now? Increase, potency is increased by 50% when they're below 50% HP. And then potency is increased by, okay, they've just gotten rid of the insta-kill. Good, I hated that. I was like, just give it something that isn't the instant kill, please. This, I, I wanted something maybe a little more creative, but it being an execute, the base potency being lower, but it being buffed by 50%, and then another 50% went under analysis. Um, yeah, no, that's, I like that. I like that. This is this is a much better ch chainsaw. It's, it's just, I like it better. Just bottom line. Uh, Red Mage, barrier potency increased by 10%. Oh, man. Bear, oh my goodness. That's the that's the white magic barrier. Yeah, red mage. Red mage has always been weird because it's hard to know whether they should be buffing one of the, the manas or nerfing the other. It's had such a weird trajectory in PvP. But I you know what though? I know that the thing I've always hated most about red mage has always been the dot on the dark magic or the, the black mana equivalent of the enchanted combo. Um but having the barrier a little bit stronger uh, whenever they're actually under the effect of Monomachy. Uh, I can't say it. <laughs> is uh, I think that's actually because I see a lot more. So when I've been watching people PvP, I see a, li a lot more white mana usage. Or, uh, or I know it's not called that, but I just call them white mana, black mana because I'm used to saying it for Red Mage for all these years. I know it's not what it's actually called. But all the same, um, I've been seeing a lot more of it when I watch people PvP. So I've, I'm curious what that ends up actually doing. And then Toxicon, ooh, one extra dura second duration. That's not a complaint. That's good. And Guillotine, yeah. So instead of them having Gibbet Gallows, they now just Soul Reaver Guillotine, which just makes... That's that's an easy use thing. And uh, somebody said there were nameplate changes as well. There might, might have been something else. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through and see if I can find the word nameplate real quick. Out of battle option, name display, display. Unless they were talking... Unless this was the thing that was in the original... Oh, there's something new here. Because, like, I don't... You know, it's weird. I think I was so focused on the other thing. I forgot that this was even in the original patch notes. Um, but, yeah, this is the only other thing that uh, that there is. The role name plates. Anyway, uh, the big thing I wanted to look at was the PvE job changes. And so we managed to get that. I mean, there's also resolved issues. Uh, instance battle, keeping the oath and the players cannot progress the battle. Issue during... Battle with 30 ad hollow, wherein the battle does not progress under certain conditions. Good thing that didn't happen to me. I went through Dunscape a lot recently. Um, position of, I've seen this. Th this, actually, I forgot about. This is really funny when it happens sometimes. Uh, I've seen them like floating in the air before. Graphics did not display. Island Sanctuary were earnings listed from the previous season, differed from the earnings actually received. Fishing log and fish guide. I don't want to hear about fishing. I don't want to hear. They're better if I log in and they're, uh, the first thing I'm checking when I log in is Fox Hollows and the ocean fishing achievements. If there's a new point related ocean fishing achievement, 
I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I have to do it. I, if it's there, if it's there, I have to do it. That's it. I just, I don't have a choice in the matter. Any important known changes? Tent Circle and Tent Circle Savage were in the attack indicator for the enemy attack. Well, we now know there's attack called Entangling Web. Disappears when executing the jump, the <laughs> general action jump. Oh, Dragoons. Um, okay, PvP, Bio Blaster. Fails to mention damage over time effect is not affected by analysis. Okay, so it just, it fails to mention that it's not affected. Only that initial, which is kind of lame. Now I'm not as excited. I was actually thinking that the potency was going to be doubled for the dot too. So that, uh, that's, that's unfortunate. Oh, good variant changes. Let me just move on from that. Okay. Or known issues, I should say. Uh, let's see. Dia, Diadoko sword or selecting recipe tree causes the client to hang. That's definitely a problem. Don't make that sword, I guess. Uh, an issue or attempting to teleport to a PlayStation plus free destination with an invalid subscription. We're in the error message dis uh, displayed is incorrect. Okay, there aren't too many bad changes here. This is the only thing, and it's only for Dragoons. So it's uh, that's not too bad. Price of freedom or quest markers not displayed. Okay, I think we made out pretty good on that front then. All right, well, that's going to be a wrap for my full patch note video. Really just wanted to look at those job changes more than anything else. So let me know what you think about the job changes in the comment section of the video below. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned. I'll be posting first clears, guides, all that stuff this week. Although I'm probably not going to go too crazy on Savage Guides this tier. It's too close to 16, and that's where my brain is. Go watch those videos, by the way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Twitch, we get to hang out until the servers come up. And until then, I bid you adieu on YouTube. Bye-bye.